Jenny is joining us for this video in which we'll be talking about photography. Bear with me if she starts chirping at birds or shredding up cardboard or something. She's a mess. I'll be assuming that you're using a smartphone basically, but again, if you don't have access to a smartphone, no worries, we'll figure something out. Um, for those of you who have access to another kind of camera or want to learn how to use a DSLR, this is a really good opportunity to do that, um, but it is not required at all. Um, a DSLR is what I use in my work. DSLR refers to Digital Single Lens Reflex Camera. Um, they often look something like this. They're the big fancy cameras that you see journalists, etc. use. They have all kinds of lenses, etc. They basically combine the abilities of the um, kind of mechanical glass lens with the digital abilities of a modern camera. So it's kind of best of both worlds. You are not required to use anything like that, um, but if you have one and don't know how to use it, get in touch and we can do a separate kind of meeting to talk through those methods. Um, if you have one and want to use it, great. If you have one and don't want to use it, that's great too. Like I said, I um, kind of expect everyone to just use their smartphones. Regardless of what kind of equipment you're using uh, for this project, I expect you to document the person themselves, um, the process of what it is that they're doing, um, and the environment in which you are doing this interview. So if you can, sit your person next to a nice bright window like the one that I'm in front of right now. Um, it's a rainy day, so there's no direct sunlight, but that's actually perfect because we don't have any weird um, shadows or anything behind me. It's just kind of a nice flat light. Um, that's going to be ideal for a portrait. Portraits are important because although you know what this person looks like, anyone looking at your documentation in the future absolutely has no idea what they look like. Um, so just a basic kind of, you know, face shot. Um, you know, if you can get more than a face, that's great. Um, but just show us what they look like. This can be a nice opportunity for the person to have um, a photo of themselves taken. People often don't have photos of themselves, so if you are able to take a nice photo of them, uh, do it. You absolutely should, and then you should share it with them. We'll talk about sharing your field work um, in the paperwork video. Um, the process shots are important because I'd like to see what it is that they do. Um, if you're in the kitchen with a person, show me it is what they're making. Um, show me what they're carving. Show me what song they're playing, etc. Just give me a little taste of what it is that they're doing. The environment shots are important because I want to know where you are when you're doing this documentation. Um, the environment can change the mood of the conversation and can change what it is that you're doing. Um, so I'm in my office right now. If someone was here documenting me, I would expect them to maybe take a photo of Jenny, take a picture of the things on the wall, things like that. It doesn't have to be um, any, you know, Snoopy stuff. You don't need to take photos of their entire house or where, wherever it is that you are. Um, but just show me basically where you're sitting. There are two kind of things that are um, fundamentally important to these photos, um, whatever the content of the photos is. Um, lighting first and then composition. We'll talk about lighting. Um, I've already mentioned the importance of sitting, um, you know, by a nice source of light. If you don't have natural light, stick a lamp somewhere. Um, you know, <laughs> theoretically, um, you know, I know this is all a little iffy since you may or may not be doing this in your own home or in a friend's home, and that's per that person's home. Um, but if you have a lamp nearby, move it around. Um, you know, flip on the overhead light. Just make sure that things are well lit. Um, flashes are the bane of my existence, but if you're in a dark environment and really have no way to get an additional light source, that's when you use a flash and in no other circumstances. Um, flashes, if they're used incorrectly, um, don't do any good or they, um, you know, they either don't affect the photo at all or they completely distort the colors um, and wash out the subject's face, the environment, etc. So, use that sparingly. Composition is what makes the photos pretty. It's not as important as lighting, but it makes the photos attractive. Um, so the most important composition rule um, in photography is the rule of thirds. This shows what the rule of thirds is. Um, if you're looking at your subject or potential subject, break your um, kind of realm of vision into thirds 
and where you see those points, those imaginary points where the lines intersect, that's where you need to line up your subject. Um, here's an example using a couple of my photos that illustrate how you should line things up. If the subject were in the center of the photo, it probably wouldn't be quite as impactful. Again, this is kind of secondary to lighting. As long as you're showing me what's important, that's what matters. Keep in mind that whenever you photograph people, you should try to avoid cutting off their limbs. Uh, it can distort the photo and um, make things look kind of funky. Um, <laughs> you know, if you're taking a standing photo of someone, make sure that their feet are in the photo. Make sure both of their hands are in the photo. Um, it'll make things look more natural. In the next video, we're going to be talking about paperwork. Uh, <laughs> strap in, maybe get yourself a cup of tea um, or another drink, um, and we'll get all that done.